Hiking can be a great way to release your stress and anxiety from your everyday life. But what happens when your way of decompressing turns into a nightmare situation? Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true hiking horror stories. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going. Now, without further ado, let's get into these creepy and allegedly true hiking horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. My name is Luke. No need to conceal our identities here. Just want to share what happened. This weekend, on Saturday morning, 1-9-2021, I took a couple of my friends, Cody and Austin, out to my favorite campsite in the Mark Twain Forest, just outside the small town of Chadwick, Missouri. I helped them set up camp, and had a beer with them, and then left just before sundown. Sunday morning, I came back to bring them a case of Budweiser and check in on them. They were gone, cleaned up and looked as if they were never there. Now I was glad they cleaned up and did not leave a mess, but I found it quite odd since they told me they planned to rough it out there for a month or two to save up money and buy land. I decided to grab a beer and take a hike as I had time to kill. On this hike, I got about 45 yards west of the site and saw a shredded and mangled coyote covered in blood. I could tell there had been a struggle within about a 10 yard radius, and I know I have heard strange things out here plenty of times as I spend almost every weekend out here at that site. I know these woods well, day and night. I had also told Cody and Austin to keep their weapons close and their tent closed after they go to bed because they might hear strange animals close by. I told them to keep food locked in the truck and all that. Anyway, after seeing this coyote, I got somewhat spooked just by the nature of its condition. I do not know any animal that kills that violently or kills for sport. I head back out of the woods and text them jokingly saying, Didn't even get through the night, huh? To which he replies, Dude, if you had heard what we heard, it sounded like a coyote got ripped in half like 40 yards west of the site. After that, I told him exactly what I saw. Once I got back to town, I went to a buddy's house for his birthday and told everybody about what had happened. Most did not believe me at all, so I offered to load up anybody in my truck that does not believe me and to take them to see it for themselves. Of course, given this opportunity, nobody wanted to go. But another friend of mine, Eli, said, Hell yeah, let's go. So I took Eli out there. By the time we got there, it was about nine at night fairly dark out there. All we had were two flashlights, a machete, and a buck knife. We set on the short walk to where I had seen the mangled coyote so he could see it with his own eyes. To our surprise, the coyote was gone, but the drying pools of blood and signs of a struggle were all still there. Around the time we were looking at all of this, all the sounds of the woods went silent. Even the strong flowing creek about 30 feet away from us seemed to have suddenly stopped flowing dead silence completely surrounded us. I have camped here hundreds of times that have never experienced anything like this. The woods here have never gone silent. A little freaked out by the silence, we decided to head back to my Yukon. For some reason, it seemed like the walk back was twice as far. Mind you, I know this area like the back of my hand. I know that I did not get us lost. As we got closer to the truck, the sound started slowly coming back, like Mother Nature was turning a volume knob slowly. Then, for the first time ever, I felt fear in these woods. I have never been scared even when hearing animals near my camp. Even when we saw a black bear a couple of years ago. But for some reason, almost pure terror set into both of us. So we ran the last bit back to the truck and hightailed it out of there. 
About 150 yards from the camp, my Yukon was slammed sideways off the trail. I was only doing about 15 to 20 miles per hour as these trails are narrow and it was dark. However, during the day, I have gone more than 40 miles per hour with no problem. My truck is all-wheel drive and has almost brand new all-terrain tires on it, and I have never felt it slip like that before, especially sideways. Right before we blasted sideways, there was a loud slam on my passenger side rear door, quarter panel area. After that, I floored it to get out of there as quickly as possible, and no sooner than we started hauling ass out of there did both Eli and myself instantly feel sick to our stomachs. Once we got about 30 miles from the woods and out of Chadwick, all the way to Sparta, we stopped at the gas station to look at the truck. There is now a massive swiping smudge and dent on the side of my Yukon that was never there before. Neither of us were remotely impaired, as I had only had one beer that day, and uh, that was around noon, and Eli, I don't even think he drinks at all. I've never even seen him drink. I later took him home and we told a few other people what had happened. I was feeling sicker by the moment and my head was pounding. I just could not speak complete sentences and could not keep balance very well. So I went to bed. The following day, which was Monday, I woke up and went to work, feeling sicker than I ever have before. My shop sent me home and I spent the last two days lying in bed sweating so heavily I became dehydrated and I've been pumping myself with water as much as I can. I am back at work now because I need the money, but my fever is still at 99.7 degrees Fahrenheit, and the sweating has not stopped for a minute. I am still having trouble eating, and I am still very spooked by what I encountered. I hope that somebody listening to this show has an idea of what I did encounter, though. Eli immediately said Skimwalker the moment we hit it, but I am open-minded, but I would be lying to say if I was sure of anything in specific. Let me know what you guys think of this. I am dying to hear an outside opinion on this. It's still extremely fresh on my mind. It has only been three days since this happened. Thanks for your time. A few years back, my friends Jeff, Gabe, and I decided to take a hike in a secluded area we were not too familiar with. I was 16 at the time, and Jeff was 18, and I believe Gabe was around 19. We were all into photography, so we were hoping to get to the top of the mountain just as the sun was setting to get some really good shots. We turned on some really cool music and generally just relaxed on the way up having a good time, making jokes, and conversation. We saw a few groups of people on the way up, all of which warned us to get off the mountain before dusk, as bears and mountain lions were very prominent in the area, and it would not be a smart idea to hike too much longer after dark. We did not take them too seriously, and continued up the mountain until we reached the summit and got our pictures. Unfortunately, they did not turn out that great, and, since the trail was a loop, we decided to follow the loop in hopes of getting a better angle. What we failed to realize was that the loop was several miles long, and it would take us way beyond nightfall to get back down. By the time we had realized our mistake, it was unfortunately far too late to do anything about it. We were in the middle of the Colorado wilderness, with nothing to guide us but our phone flashlights. Eventually, my speaker died, and, as it did, all three of us immediately noticed a bizarre, almost surreal silence. At this point, we are more than just a little freaked out, and are beginning to panic. I decided to hold the small pocket knife I had on me. I put it in my fist, and it did give me a little comfort. The silence was short-lived and was broken within minutes by the sound of heavy boots on the gravel. A figure appeared over the hill. As it came closer into view, I noticed a few odd things about what at the time I thought was a man. He was walking in the pitch black night without any source of light. He had a black bandana covering his lower face, and he was walking very slowly and deliberately. 
As he passed, I muttered and audibly nervous, Hey. He never responded, nor did he even glance in our direction. The night air was chilly, but I swear, I felt it drop a few degrees when this person walked by us. We picked up our pace and did not dare to look back for several minutes. By the time we worked up the courage, he was already gone. We tried to explain it for each other's comfort, but we all knew that it was not quite that simple. By the time we were getting close to the bottom of the mountain, we had calmed down just a bit, but that did not last for too long. There was only one car in the parking lot, and it was ours, meaning there was no one else up on that mountain. We left in a rush, and still to this day I get goosebumps thinking about the ordeal. Thank you for sharing my story, Swamp Dweller, and I hope everybody here enjoyed it. I grew up in rural Oregon, with around 70 acres of wooded private property as my personal playground. By the time I was 16 years old, I'd spent countless hours exploring every foot I could and have never experienced anything more unpleasant than poison oak and more than a few blackberry scratches. Oddly, there was one small portion of the property I had never explored. I cannot really tell you why I had never gone to this little corner, but I just never did. It was like an unconscious choice to just never go there. There was an old trail that went there, but I don't know, I guess it just never came up. One afternoon, I got the itch to turn left and follow that trail, however. The day was bright and warm. Nothing was sketchy or untoward. However, within the first 50 feet of the trailhead, I felt an overwhelming need to stop in my tracks. It was like... As I stood there, I was stepping into a sticky mousetrap. My feet simply would not carry me any further. As I stood there, every hair on my body stood on end, and I felt sick to my stomach with dread. I spun in place, looking in every direction for whatever danger my whole body was telling me was present. The spot where I stood was a bit of a clearing in the tree. I had around 20 or so feet of total visibility in all directions, and further in some. There was nothing, not a bird or a bug. Though you've never felt such utter terror and desire to go full knees to chest for the hills. I made my way back to the trailhead as fast as I could possibly backpedal. And the second my feet left the trail, it all faded. My hair went back down, my stomach settled, and zero sense of unease. It was like stepping out of a room and closing the door. For years, I wondered what kind of presence I had encountered. Many naysayers tried to tell me it was probably a cougar, and it was just my sixth sense picking up on it. But I'm not buying it. Then, in talking with my parents one day, who used to wander that property when they were dating a few decades ago, I found out they had come across the remnants of an old homestead there. It had deteriorated to the point there was nothing left but the outline of a foundation and some old medicine bottles. I had a light bulb moment. It seems that maybe one of the homesteaders was still there, and I was trespassing. I've had short-lived moments of temptation where I thought about going back there and seeing if I could replicate the experience. In all honesty though, whatever was there was way too dark for me to ever want to encounter it again. It seems best left alone. This experience I'm going to describe has taken a while for me to get together and write down. I have experienced a few paranormal things, but this is the craziest one of all of them. It takes place in Yosemite National Park in August of 2017 with my two best friends, Zach and Andrew. Zach had worked that summer as a parking agent at Glacier Point and was familiar with the area. The employee housing he was given was a house in Wawona with two other guys. Andrew and I were visiting for the week and had each been to Yosemite before. One of the nights we decided to watch the sunset over Chilnuana Falls. It was a nice hike and Zach had done it before. The trail was about 4 miles to the top with about a 2,000 foot elevation gain. 
We brought food and decided to hike up and take a swim and eat at the pools on top of the falls. We set out a couple of hours before sunset. As we approached the top portion, we were about a half mile to the top of the falls, where a guy about our age, probably early 20s, ran up to us from bushes frantically asking for help. This guy said his friend had fallen 50 feet off a cliff and had a shattered femur. Zach was used to this after working in the park all summer. He had many injuries and was used to it. The man did not have cell reception, but I did, so I called 911 and reported the incident, requesting search and rescue. After a few minutes, we decided we wanted to walk and continue the hike after search and rescue assured us they would be there soon with a helicopter. We told the guy help was on the way and continued the next half mile up to the top of the falls. When we got there, it was a picture-perfect scene. A beautiful sunset as we swam and ate when we got an amazing show. As we saw the helicopter land to pick up the injured guy we just encountered right below us. I am a private pilot and Air Force aviator, so I loved every second of watching the helicopter land on the mountainside. After the sunset, we began to hike down and past the spot with the injured guy and search and rescue were taking care of him. We had a brief encounter with them. They thanked us for calling it in. It was now dark out and we continued the hike down. There was not much moonlight. It was dark so we used our phones as flashlights to see the trail. This is where the story truly gets interesting. The top of the hike was switchbacks with a steep incline on the right and a steep decline on the left with shrubs and trees. It was too steep to hike down, hence the switchbacks. About one mile into the hike down, Zach was in front with a light. I was second, also shining my light, and Andrew was in the back. Zach was shining his light ahead and saw something sticking out from behind a tree. It was about 15 feet ahead of us, just off the right of the path, and instinctively shined the light at it. That is whatever it was exposed itself from the tree and ran across the path, down to the left and down the steep grade. It ran on two feet and resembled some sort of humanoid. It was a little shorter than us and very clearly had two arms and two legs, but it moved in an inhuman way. It kind of resembled a person. It had a head and its limbs appeared to be just skin, no clothes on at all. We all three saw it and we stopped dead in our tracks. We continued shining the light to where it ran, down the left side of the mountain, but did not see anything after it ran down. We were terrified, none of us really knowing what to say because we had no idea what we had seen. The worst part was that we had another three miles to hike down and a mile and a half from the trailhead to Zach's house, all while knowing that this creature could be stalking us and was near. Luckily, we made it to his house terrified and exhausted, but without harm. Whatever it was must have been as scared as we were. My question is if anybody has ever had a similar experience in that area. I have done my research and my best guess would be like a skimwalker or something like that, but it did not try to lure us into the forest with it, so I am unsure. We had a subsequent experience a couple of years later in Tioga Pass right outside of the Tioga Gate of the park. We were camping in a closed area in Tioga in the middle of the night. I woke up to go pee, and before exiting the tent, I saw an orb about five feet in front of the tent, floating across with a bright light. I do not think it was a person because Zach, Andrew, and I all saw the orb floating across, and there was not anyone around us. Our friend Jackson was also in the tent, and in the morning he told us he felt rocks getting thrown at the tent all night, along with hearing footsteps near. Does anybody have any similar experiences? I would love to know. We all know what we saw, and we all know it was not human. I'm a 19-year-old male, tall but underweight, so not extraordinarily strong. One evening in the summer, I decided to go on a small hike, despite it raining. The trail was on a long road in the middle of nowhere. It is not super busy, but seeing cars every once in a while is not very weird. There is a small pull-off for parking across the street from this trail. It's probably able to fit like 10 cars. I park at the end of a lot, and I am the only one there, 
obviously because it is raining. Soon after walking, it starts to pour, but I can keep going because I am looking for something, unrelated to the story, but it was a working fountain in the middle of the woods. As soon as I find it, I held back because I am soaked. When I get out of the woods, there is a car parked next to mine. It is an older boxy car, late 70s or early 80s maybe. The thing is, is they pulled in backward to park, so their driver's side door is on my driver's side door, and they parked close to my car like a yard or two. I immediately think this is weird and start to panic, thinking they are probably attempting an abduction. I thought, what if I turned around and hiked for a bit, with the hope they would be gone after? But if they were kidnapping me, they already saw me, so my best bet is to go straight to the car. I remembered reading online that if you think someone is trying to abduct you, you should probably enter the passenger side door. But my car was crap and often the key fob would only unlock the driver's side door. So I decided I could not risk it. I made it to the road, looked both ways and for a split second, I decided to book it to the car. While repeatedly hitting the unlock button to assure it would open, I jumped in, clicked lock a bunch of times, got the key knee ignition and began to get the heck out of there. Everything was slippery and cold because my hands were wet. I floored it out of there. As soon as I left, I stared in my rear view mirror, and not even 20 seconds go by, and the car leaves, going the opposite way thankfully. I don't know. Something just seemed really odd about the situation. It might not be the scariest story ever shared, but it made me feel really uncomfortable, and honestly, I question very often what those people wanted to do, and why they parked so close to me in the middle of nowhere, for no reason. This is in the middle of nowhere, eastern Montana. This happened about 6 p.m. We were playing hide and seek with all my best friends and their siblings. We hear this loud screaming coming from the woods. So as smart people would do, we start hiking to find out what was making the noise. On our way up, we noticed that there were these two deer that were standing completely still, staring at us. They were scarily still. We even make a bunch of noise to try to get their attention and try to scare them away, but they don't budge. They keep looking directly up the mountain. We do not really think much of it. We keep going, and whatever it is, is still screaming absolutely bloody murder. My friend's older sister is calling back. Then, suddenly, it just stops. We keep going for a bit, and we eventually find mountain lion tracks. We all sit down, and we all have this feeling that something is watching us. So we close our eyes, and I told everyone to point to where the feeling is coming from. We all point to the same exact spot. Above us. My friend and I stay at that spot while her two other siblings go up a little further. They come back down to us, and they say they saw the mountain lion. We decided it would probably be a smart idea to go back to the property. We begin to hike down and the deer are still there. We figure it's because they knew the mountain lion was there. The next day we come back to where we were after being out for the entire day. My friend, her older sister, and I are all very tired. It was about 10 p.m.-ish. The older sister goes outside to pee outside of the trailer. This was in June, so it was still bright. She sprints back inside the trailer and tells my friend and me that there is something out there that ran toward her. We, we believe that she was making jokes. At around 11 p.m., my friend goes to sleep. I stayed up because I was not very tired. Sometime around 1 a.m., she wakes up to go to the bathroom. She goes outside the trailer and dead sprints back inside and tells me there is 100% something out there and that whatever it was was fast and big and ran toward her. The older sister wakes up my friend, telling me, all of this information and comes to the back of the trailer where we are. There are four motion sensor lights on the corner of our trailer pointed at us and this is important. We all were scared crapless in the trailer and I'm lying on my side looking at the window. My friend is there looking out the opposite window. The curtains are closed but I notice a lighting change. I tell the others what I saw because I don't believe they were paying fully attention. 
And about 10 seconds later, and about 10 seconds later, my friend says the light on my side went off. So now we know something is 100% out there, walking around our trailer, and we are terrified. My friend is wild, and decides to go back to sleep for whatever reason. So, her older sister and I work up enough courage to move out to the front of the trailer. It is now probably 2am if I had to guess. We notice that the lights out front are also getting triggered. We are clueless about what we are supposed to do, so we lock the doors. We didn't find out to the morning that the locks don't work. We grab the biggest knives we can. We sit on the bed that is in the main room. There is a window not even an inch above the bed, so keep this in mind. Whatever was out there kept circling around until it stopped by the window and started tapping on the trailer and hitting it hard enough to shake the trailer. The older sister and I are almost in tears from fear at this point. It is easily around 3 a.m. at this point and we hear my friend's grandfather coughing outside. The older sister is overly concerned for him, but I force her to stay inside because whatever is out there is not friendly. The coughing stops eventually. Next, we hear a very faint screaming from the woods as whatever it is outside our trailer was still tapping and rubbing against it. So we knew it was not the mountain lion. Or is it? We eventually fall asleep at around 4.30 a.m., and a couple of hours later, we investigate around the trailer and find deep imprints around our trailer that are way too big to be any animal that is out there. The same friend goes there quite often, and the last time they did, I did not tag along for obvious reasons. But something jumped on top of the trailer and was pacing back and forth and would run back and forth every so often. Also, sometimes stopping right over where they were laying. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true hiking horror stories. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton in the YouTube algorithm. If you're listening on iTunes or another podcast platform, be sure to give the show a 5-star rating as it really helps me out a ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video as I upload them almost every single day in all things natural and supernatural. If you're not aware, you can download your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories wherever you go, from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. And the best part is, is it's absolutely free and always will be. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it's a scary story from hiking or something else in the outdoors, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. In the comments down below, I'd love to know what story tonight was your favorite. I'd probably have to say story number three was my personal favorite tonight. Interesting stuff and downright terrifying. I love to hike myself and have not had too many creepy experiences out there. Maybe the woods going silent a few times on me and the occasional feeling of being watched, but nothing too terrifying. The scariest thing I'd say that probably ever happened to me was running face to face with the mountain lion. But usually, as long as you respect nature, Nature respects you. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the swamp the way you do. If you'd like to support the swamp outside of hitting that like button and subscribing, maybe check out our merch store. I've got face masks, t-shirts, hoodies, and just about everything else you could want. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the swamp. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.